wonder if I can pass this alternator's organic. Welcome back to the channel. Finally, we got a cloudy day and a break in the weather. Other than doing hay for the last week and a half non-stop, it's been to the mid-high 30s and just been brutal. You haven't even been able to touch this thing and get third degree burns. So it's been a lot of sitting inside in the evening until it cools down, a lot of pooling, a lot of beering. But now it's time to get on the car again. So in the old 64 episode today, we're gonna remove the alternator, gonna get rid of the rad, probably take off a fan, any other hoses and connections that we got around here, and get ready to pull this engine out. I think it'd just be easier to pull this thermostat housing off. There's quite a quite a lip here where this cable has got to go around. So bolts have all been coming out nice on this thing so far. So we'll just take it right off. And we can get a good look down inside here and see how gummed up it is. Inside the rad, we'll give you a show later. It looks like there's a wasp nest that was in there. So she might not be usable. She might have to go out and get cord. At least this way, kind of look down inside here, get an idea what's inside that water pump. Though it does turn pretty freely, it gives a good view. Well, she's been running with no uh, thermostat anyway. She's not all plugged up solid in anyway, so that's good. I guess we'll carry on. Now one thing I've found quite surprising on this old beast is that these wires are nice and soft and still bend really nice. Because uh, on my 08 Dodge, if you'd watched some of my videos on that, when I fixed the door uh, wiring, uh, they were crispy. They broke. As soon as I touched them, they would break. But these, these ones are still like, still like rubber. So, anyway, I'm gonna move on to the alternator here next. So I'm just gonna get rid of this wiring harness. Gotta pull a couple pieces of wire off here, a screw, and it looks like a 10 millimeter nut. And then we'll get onto this bracket and pull her out. I'm gonna have to keep that as some kind of souvenir. <laughs> it's like a club. The only downside to it I need this bracket that's in behind the wood here. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to bust this off. But, get the fuel filter and a fuel pump. God, it's nice working on these engines. So much room around them. Now I'm gonna move on to the training lines that are uh, down here. And if any of you are new to this stuff, I highly recommend a set of these wrenches. You can see how the box end is cut open. 
just a little bit to get over the line, but it grabs on all sides of the nut because usually they're either brass or copper or something soft like that. So this helps grab it a little better, stop them from stripping. They don't get used very often, but they're definitely a necessity when you're in there. Fitting is turning inside the radiator as well, so I have to get another wrench. It was more of a two handed job to get those lines off, but uh, they both came off nice. Threads are still good. While I was down here, got the transmission lines off. I also clamp off a low rat hose and it moves. It is a little tight because it goes right in the water pump, it's only about eight inches long. So now we're just going to get in here and take off the bolts. There's four of them. Holding the radiator in. The support actually is part of the radiator. So pull all four bolts out and then hopefully this will slide right out of there. Alright. I love engineers. And I know there's one watching right now. <laughs> this is the issue I got. Down here, there's a bracket that's part of this radiator. In order for it to come out, which only goes that far, it has to go back, up, and then over this ridge that's here. But the radiator hits the fan. Can't go far enough back for me to get over that bump. So I thought, oh, that's easy. I'll just take the fan off. Well, just lovely. Just lovely. It is not out enough for me to pull it sideways to get out. And it hits the radiator, and the radiator is back as far as it can go. <sighs> okay, gonna have to think about this. Well, it was a tight squeeze, but I did manage to get that fan off. You're working within a half inch, maybe three quarters to the rad. It's a couple little marks, but I don't think I did any real damage. But I was able to get that off. Now I got lots of room to work in here. Now, one thing I find, I don't know, unusual or odd or what, but for the age of the vehicle this hub is a cast aluminum it's also a cast aluminum like a spider that's on the end of that pump which i find surprising so maybe this has been replaced at some point and maybe that's an aftermarket item anyway i'm gonna pull that lower rad hose and get that radiator out There it is, she's out. A couple little bent over fins, but all in all, it looks okay. Still don't know if I can save this radiator or not. I don't know if we can see it here, but there is a physical wasp's nest completely built inside there. I don't know if there's some kind of chemical I can use to get inside this thing and flush this out. I guess uh, there must be some kind of rad flush that I can fill this thing up, let it sit for a bit. Then hopefully get everything to kind of come out this way, you know, if they pressure wash it or pressurize it with a hose or something. But the rad looks like it's in really good shape. I'm sure it's not cheap to get a new one. So being able to use this original one would be great. <coughs> now we're going to get this power steering pump out of here. The, uh, the lines look like they should be long enough that I can just pull it off to the side. So I don't have to open them up because this pump feels good inside. It even feels like it builds pressure as I'm turning it. So it'd be nice if I didn't have it exposed to the moisture out here in the rain. So we'll just try to get this done up and we'll flop it over to the side of the car. Still amazed how good 
everything comes apart in this car. So, power steering pump out of the way, low rad house gone. Now we got about a bunch of linkages we got to get rid of. We got our throttle linkage, move a couple more hoses here for the vacuum. I think this is the choke cable. It's a fuel line we got to remove. It's all the way down to the fuel pump. I guess don't really have to remove it, but I just want to get it out of the way. And then also the main line coming from the tank we got to move. Uh, then we'll get on to this little skirt which I removed this one over here, if you remember, just has access to the side of the engine here and into the motor mount. So we'll get rid of it as well. And hopefully we can get in there to the motor mounts, which uh, I think are gonna be a, a bugger to get off. So once I got the linkage off, uh, this carburetor, everything moves. And I don't know if I can catch this on video, but if you watch down in here, I'm gonna pump this carb. Did you see that? It's, I don't know if it's water coming out or what, but it's pumping. The carburetor is actually pumping. I'm going to assume it's water because it's kind of white color. Uh, and the fuel I'm thinking would be green to golden color coming out of this thing. But whatever it's doing, it is pulling something through the line. There it goes again. <laughs> I'll be damned. It actually works. So now I got all the connections and grounds off the back of the engine. I got that taken off. And I removed the fuel line and filter. And I just cut the main line going back to the tank. Got rid of that skirt on this side that was covering here. And I can see the bolt down here for the engine mount on both sides. Uh, one thing I found is this. I'm not quite sure what this is. It looks like a thermostat coil, just like you'd have on the wall in a house. And I'm assuming it rotates. And it also goes, I think it's got a rod that goes inside the manifold. I'm not 100% sure what that is. If anyone knows what this is, uh, drop a little note there. Because I'll have to do some research. This is on the right hand side. Coming right off the manifold, it's right in between the manif exhaust manifold. And the exhaust pipe it's right on the side like i said it's got like a counterweight here and then a spring almost like a thermostat that would have in the house so never seen that before so the next thing is transmission lines i gotta see where they're going if they're attached to the side of the oil pan and remove them from the transmission anyway i also got to get in underneath and try to uh, get the linkages off for the push button transmission uh, these are the cables here that are coming out. There's three cables and they go down in underneath. So I do have to get under the car, which means I also got to take off the dry shaft, which I'm not looking forward to, but got to be done. So right now though, you can probably hear the thunder rolling a little bit and it is starting to rain. So I'm going to put the outro of this uh, video right now because I'm going to say short video, not much getting done. I am working outside here in the dirt and the grass, so unfortunately, I got to call it a day. If you're seeing this, then it truly is the end of the video, and I'll catch you all again next week. Thanks for watching.